Good guys, back with the Outer Circle, and today's episode, we are going to be looking at the Space Wolves Legion range for the Horus Heresy. And, well, you could probably guess it's going to be an interesting video. So, to start off with, we have the Grey Slayers upgrade. I really like the Grey Slayers upgrade. There are flaws with it, and it comes down to whether or not you like the leather gimp masks, and whether or not you like the style of the little hatchet axes that they've got. Me personally, I like the gimp masks, not a fan of the axes. But the shoulder pads, they're fine. Uh, the sort of sergeant torso and little banner pole, they're really good as well. And I love what they did with the combat shields here. They are very uh, ornamental without being ostentatious. They are a lovely balance, I think. Uh, and yeah, those shoulder pads with the segments to them, very much echoing their Primark or like that Thunder Warrior style of segmented armor. Yeah, they look really, really sexy. So overall, I quite like this particular kit. It's cousin over here. I have less to say about because it misses those awesome storm shields and replaces them with incorrectly sculpted bolt guns. Well, bolt pistols. And this has been a bugbear of mine because people have been coping with it ever since it released and let's just call it what it was a mistake okay the iron sights are located underneath the weapon it's not a laser sight it's the iron sight it's the thing you physically have to align with your eye to aim the pistol and it's underneath the weapon it is a silly mistake and i don't know why they insist on keeping it in rotation rather than just owning the mistake they instead are just pretending that it's no issue at all. And it just blows my mind doubling down on something like that. Frankly, there is nothing in this kit that couldn't have just been included in the other kit because you're coming with all the same heads. You've got all the axes in there still, the same sergeant upgrade, the same shoulder pads. Just put the five bolt pistols in the other one and remove one SKU, SKU from your website. Uh, it just boggles the mind. Anyway, uh, let's look at the Dreadnought now. Their Contempt of Dreadnought. This is the worst of the 30k Contempt of Dreadnoughts, hands down. And that's a shame, because the torso part of it is actually not too bad. It's the rest of the Dreadnought that was, well, bad. I quite like this, and I do like the fact, though, that... What is left of this terrible Dreadnought is the best parts. The head, it didn't need the large like targeting sensor eye. It should have been just two of the left hand eye, uh, where it has that sort of Viking helmet, like Sutton Who, Anglo-Saxon vibe, where it has the, uh, the big eye cowlings underneath it. You know, it, it's channeling like an old Norse style without being yet just another wolf's head or something to that effect. I like the diamond uh, shaped gem. I do really think that those are a unique look that I really like seeing on the Space Wolves as opposed to uh, the round gems that you see everywhere else. And even the fact that it has sort of a wolf tooth necklace, the chain one, that's fine as well because it's only got a couple of teeth on it and a single rune and it's not being overused. So overall, this is actually the only Dreadnought I can think of that actually was benefiting or boosted by the fact that it mostly went into uh, plastic. It just was not a great Dreadnought, uh, unfortunately. Um, I know people will hate to hear that, and I don't think there's even any old pictures of it here, but it was very chonky and overdone, and it didn't work. And I think a lot of people uh, felt the same way. Uh, then we have the Death Sworn. So this is an elite unit for them. Uh, a type of pseudo-destroyer unit. And... They don't do it for me. And that probably isn't a surprise to people who know my history with the Space Wolves, but let's break down a little bit why. So the armor as a whole is okay. The leather straps holding everything together is very much influenced by modern pop culture interpretations of vikings not great um but the shoulder pads with the rune uh engravings going on around or the reliefs going on around the 
trim, that's fine. That looks good. And the helmets, despite being a sort of wolf snout, I think they work on this particular unit. The ones where they don't really pull it off are the two which have the eye replaced with the targeting reticle, the one at the very back and the one, of course, at the front here. But in general, I think that helmet looks good. It is a relatively snarling, threatening helmet. Um, where things start to go south is the the wolf, uh, I guess, a couvermont added to them. Uh, so you have axes here, for example, okay? And the power axes on some of these guys, and they've got these little wolf's tails hanging off them, off the end of them. The way they are sculpted makes perfect sense if you're holding this axe vertically up in the air. Why is it sticking out like this? It shouldn't be sticking out like that because it looks wrong to you. If this model is moving forward, the forward motion would cause this fur to be, well, be pulling back this way because of the effects of inertia. And instead, what's happening is it just sticks straight out like it's a solid piece of material because, well, it is. It's a solid piece of resin shouldn't have been sculpted onto the model. And I would advocate for cutting them off and either removing them entirely or gluing them on to suit the pose. Because either way, it doesn't work for this miniature. So once you start taking some of these facets, the large stasis grenades, which will just like, um, uh, like hourglasses almost, you've got these large clunky grenades You've got other grenades in different parts of the model. You have runes hanging off the back. There is just so much going on. Fur cloaks, gems on knees, spiky shins, little rune stones, leather straps, extra eye lenses. It's just too much chonk going on here. And I've seen these guys in, in the flesh or in the resin very recently, and they don't look great. And then you've got the things like the width of these axes because they've got the stylistic wolf's head, but the things are very, very thick. There is, they're thicker actually than the hand of the model that is holding them at some points. And it just doesn't feel like this aggressive, sleek unit. It just feels very clunky and I don't like it. That's of course my personal taste. Uh, and it doesn't help that the paint job is not good on them. Uh, well, that's not fair. That's very unfair of me to say. The paint job is just not the paint job that we've come to expect for the Horus Heresy range. This is a bit more Games Workshop-ish with the edge highlights. And, of course, these are strong contrasting colours in the edge highlights where they've painted the trim essentially in a Space Wolves grey as opposed to using it as a very subtle highlighting. And that's okay. But as a Horus Heresy paint job to suit the rest of the range, it is a bad paint job. So I really want to clarify that point there because it wouldn't be fair of me to target a person's artwork and just say that they're a shit painter. That's not fair. Um, that's not right and it has nothing to do with the quality of the models. No, I'm talking about as an advertisement, comparing these to the rest of the range, they are completely different because it's someone's personal army that's being shown, not... Uh, correctly painted miniatures that have been commissioned for this. Um, then we move on to the Viragia. And again, like you can see the difference in uh, painting style very strongly here. Of course, the Viragia famously uh, suffer from the banana fur phenomenon. Um, what is the banana fur phenomenon? Well, it's where it looks like there's a bunch of bananas uh, hanging from their bodies instead of fur. <laughs> it's just badly sculpted. It was digitally sculpted and fur can be hard. And I feel bad for the person who did the sculpting. Um, now, what are the other issues with the score? Because there are actually a lot of issues with them. They're close to working. That's the first thing I want to say. These guys were really close to working. And I think what hurts them is twofold. First, there is the heads. So when you see these faces with these sort of gigantic overproportioned mouths and such... It doesn't work for a lot of people. That's a big one. Yes, the banana fur is another big problem. Uh, or the fact it looks like a, you see their teeth hanging from their, their pelts here. Those little wolf's teeth look identical to the fur around them. They're the same size and shape. That's how misproportioned the fur and such is. And you'll see it correct on Lehman Russ in a moment. We also have this very, very thick trim. Now, thick trim is great for casting, getting the details, which is why I think 
um, more and more miniatures are moving to thicker components here. Uh, we see that really badly in shown in the Emperor's Children, where the Emperor's Children Terminator Praetor is an awful miniature compared to the Phoenix Terminators, which really set the bar for gorgeous miniatures that came out a decade prior to it. Right? So it makes it very hard to live up to those shoes. And these guys fall into the same boat of having this really, really thick gold trim. It is not a subtle detail that a good painter can pick out. This is something that a rookie painter would be able to pick out because it is just so thick okay and that again is not to pick on someone's painting skills it's just to say that the sculpt is too cartoonishly proportioned and that means that you know people from all walks of life are going to be able to pick it out but that also means that it's very hard to do something special with it and really showcase the uh the fine motor skills that really top tier painters do have up their sleeve and that's what hurts this unit overall. So gigantic overproportioned mouths where they all have weirdly large chins and jaw lines that even compared to other space marines is not a great look. Of course, the sculpted on fur means these bodies are very rigid in how they are assembled. It's basically you can move the arms around and that's about it from one body to another. Not great. Uh, converting them is also a pain because you have to get rid of all of that fur if you want to do anything. Even if you want to re-sculpt the fur, you've got to get rid of the existing stuff. Uh, the Viragia are awful, awful models in that regard. And it's a shame because they are they are within striking distance of being some of the best Terminators in 30k. If the fur was correctly nailed, if the trim was refined a bit more, and I think if they had done an Anglo-Saxon style helmet instead of the... Uh, and had the option, perhaps, of these bare heads in there, it would have worked so, so much better um, as a miniature kit. Uh, then we have the Legion Praetor. So everything that's wrong with the Vragia, we see again here, where, I mean, his mouth is nearly as big as the whole rest of his head in size. So there's a proportion issue there straight away. But I did a video years ago when this first came out, and one of the things I pointed out was how this has been digitally sculpted, but the parts had been just sort of glued or Lego bricked onto each side of the model. And you see that in things like the hand, the grip stops before it goes through the palm of the hand. There should be visible grip in the palm and there's not. It's just the hilt is just glued on, stuck on to the underside of his hand. And then the sword itself plonked on the other side. Not ideal. Uh, and of course, the fur, let's just say what is the fur, and talking to those finer details about how things are very chunky in their sculpting, look at the depth and size of the carved relief in the leather of his cloak. It is it is so thick, even compared to the thin lines in his kneecaps. That's what they could have done with the cloak, and instead it's just this thick, thick detail and it just it doesn't work for me and again this is within striking distance of being a gorgeous model and it's a shame and they did something kind of different with the pose to what we've seen a lot of other models i mean for a space wolf of all things he's actually using a, a range weapon he's he's really going to town with that combi bolter uh, things like the runes in the back of the trim here they look fantastic and i like the little fetishes and symbols hanging down the cloak but with the static nature of this pose in particular, like it needs a little more bend in the knees or something, it's just very upright. Those are things that are a bit of a concession and do let the miniature down. But like with the Viragia, it's, it's, it's a four out of 10 sculpt that could have been a six or a seven out of 10 with just two or three very subtle tweaks. And then we get to Havalt Red Blade. I hate this miniature. I hated it on release. Uh, at least now that they've got a different paint job. The one that was there for a while was again out of someone's personal army, which is which is fine, but not what should be done, I think, with a professional company doing a presentation. And of course, we're not judging off the paint schemes here. We're talking about the sculpts. But this is not uh, this is a sculpt that only a mother could love. <laughs> um, where do you begin? Okay, so for a start. 
when you design a miniature, especially Marines, they don't do asymmetry especially well. Um, what I mean by this? Well, they try to keep everything in proportion. You don't have all of the weight of a miniature to one side. So think of Marnie's Kelgar. Yes, Marnie's Kelgar has giant power fists, but he has two of them, right? It keeps the proportions even. You go to Gilman. Gilman, even his 40K Primark sculpt, okay? Let's use that as an example. Yes, he has that giant power fist, but he also has this massive fiery sword. And the two together help to balance one another out. And it works because, okay, so the giant power fist, but this eye-catching, uh, enormous flaming sword, that feels like a kind of symmetry. And of course, his shoulders are in proportion, things like that. And when you get two Primarchs, you get a Primarch like Horace Lupercal, who has the big wolf cloak on uh, the top of his torso. But he feels in proportion, even with that massive mace Worldbreaker, because he has the Talon of Horus Lightning Core in the other hand. So these are the things that you commonly recognize. We also look at the chests of miniatures. So the chest of a miniature is often where your eyes will get drawn to on a Space Marine Terminators and on regular Space Marines in Power Armor. Because they have things like cables, gold aquilas, shiny things uh, to draw the eye to the chest and face. Now, look at Haval Redblade. He has almost nothing on the chest. It's pretty much blank. The chest is where he should have had the most ostentatious detail, and instead it's the space on the armor with the most breathing room. Uh, the only area that's really more blank is the upper thighs on each side of the model. Uh, there is even more going on in the back of his arms between having trim and gemstones and power cabling than there is on the chest where he's got just a single little necklace and a couple of runes. That's a faux pas, I think, personally. Now, yeah, this is personal taste some of you might think this is the most gorgeous model ever and that is totally cool you're not going to upset me and i hope i don't upset you um by saying that then you look at the face well okay he has bare flesh which is great except the tones that make up the wolf's head are very similar tones especially if you blur your eyes one is slightly more brown one is slightly more orange but you're not immediately drawn to the face. And of course, with the large gemstones to either side of his head, that takes your eye away again from the gemstones around his head. And with things like the wolf's teeth and the little stone fetish that are hanging from the necklace, they aren't bright enough objects to draw your attention there. So on the center of the model, the place you're more likely to have your attention drawn to is the belt buckle, which is a perfectly fine piece. And in fact, the fur on it's not too bad either, which is Again, first for the Space Wolves. Then we get to the right shoulder pad. Now, having that wolf's head there, it's okay to do on Horus. It's balanced out, though, by being a bit more central on the model. Uh, moved a little bit up on that arm. The problem here is that between the wolf's head and the massive, because it is an oversized, heavy bolter, it makes the right-hand side of this model feel very thick. And then... That's further reinforced by it having the knee pad with the skull on it. So it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All these details are being weighted to one side of the miniature. Even the necklace hangs to that side of the miniature. And all that there is to balance it out in the entire other side of the model is just the axe. And the axe does suffer from a lot of the same problems that the Death Sworn axes did. The, the large wolf's head sculpted in makes it feel like a very thick, chunky axe. Um, the head is too large for the shaft or the haft. There is, yeah, a lot of issues there. And they didn't do enough to balance out the miniature. Now, the individual details, like the uh, diamond-shaped gemstones, the, the furs, the heavy bolter itself with these cool little runes around, all those details individually are fine. It's the location on a miniature, how you utilize them that sucks. And again, having the leg up in this pose that leans into the heavy weapon just there is so much weight and the only way you can give some proportion to this model to make it feel more even is by looking at this exact angle here where you're relying on the cloak an item on the back of the miniature which you can only see from certain angles to help to balance out the left hand side of the miniature and the cloak itself well yeah let's not talk about that so all in all, 
I just don't like this model. And I think as a sculpt and sculpt principles, uh, as much as I delve into the art side of things, which I'm probably not known for, because um, I'm such an analytical person, not the emotional kind of person, that this just doesn't work for me. It's just so wrong on so many levels. So yeah, this is an absolute stinker and one of the worst characters in the character series and made worse by the fact that this guy got a display base when so many other awesome characters haven't. Then we get to Geiger Fellhand. Now, this is probably going to astound people, but I think this is one of the best models in the Space Wolves 30k range. He has a lot going on, but instantly that bright, blonde painted head of hair, I'm drawn straight to the center of this model. And whilst he has this large totem on the back, he also has very similar uh, iconography on the chest. The two help to balance one another out. So I'm drawn to the center of this model. He's got this aggressive pose where he's running towards the enemy. Yeah, his stubby little combat knife isn't too impressive, but it's posed correctly. He has a nice looking power core. In fact, I love this power core. I think it is very Space Wolves. I like the sort of mini cataphracty shoulder pad he has going on. I think it's one of the coolest accessories for power armor. It's like, it makes sense that there would be a unique armor plate as opposed to having just a constant set of unique types of power armor, where it's just the entire character, like a Malagurs the Twisted, is just in a unique form of plate armor that looks like nothing else. But hey, it was in some obscure piece of art in the 90s, so I guess it's canon now. Those are the things that upset me personally. And then upset's a strong word, but this is gorgeous. It's got trim, and the trim is... I mean, look how fine the trim is on this plastic model compared to, you know, this this high-end resin model and the trim and the not Celtic knotwork on him. Like, it, it's inconceivable how much better it is. Uh, the wolf's backpack with the two snowing wolves. Fantastic, perfect. And, of course, the totem itself. It's simple, and he even has this little scarab emblem, and it's just those little hints that that go into the deeper history of, this guy's been on campaigns before, he's dealt with the Thousand Suns before, he has some of their iconography in uh, his armor present. You don't see that very often. Uh, it's a bit of storytelling, and this came out in the Burning of Prospero box set, which also gave us the Plastic Araman, which less said about that until we get to the episode. But how does it the Games Workshop got the Space Wolves right, and Forge World just... I mean, what are we what are we at? Um, okay, bad, mediocre, bad, bad, worse, terrible, fantastic. What? This is unlike all of the other miniatures so far, where it's been like, yeah, they did this good, they did this bad. The space wolves range. I just feel like I'm just shooting at the poor sculptor with every verbal, uh, you know, critique I make. I feel bad. Um, we get to the wolves. These wolves are fine. They're serviceable. They actually look worse than the 40k Thunderwolves to my to my personal eye. Um, and I mean, there's not much to say there. They're just optional wolves you can take with Lehman Russ. So let's go into Lehman Russ. I love this model. <laughs> I've got all of the Primarchs, built them all, painted them all, um, except for Jagged Eye, who I'm still working on. This model is gorgeous. I really like it. I know not everyone does. Um, but I think everything is so well proportioned on it. And silly things like Draken Nien that felt so comically 80s and 90s and like early 90s, like heavy metal in its design, going back to the silly days of Warhammer, they made it work. And it works really, really well here. Uh, the axe... The proportions on the axe work so well. The leather strapping, everything is just so much less chonky here. And that's what makes it work. It's so much more refined. The fur looks great. The fetishes, uh, the little bits of weaponry, like the axe just hanging in the, in the cloak that suggests this guy's just going to pull knives or weapons out of anywhere he can find them. The backpack, like Geigor fell-handed, they've got the Snarling Wolf's backpack. The shield is actually a little bit less ostentatious than the shield on the Grey Slayers, and yet it works for me. I love this miniature. 
They even went back and made some of the old artwork work with the um, and the old original like Lehman Russ white metal sculpt from Games Workshop back when he was just a general. Um, the one of the only prizes they ever had an actual model. Uh, the segmented armor. You would think it would look really silly with the spikes and the segments on like these legs. It works perfectly. It actually works perfectly. Um, all the little like leather straps and trinkets, and I mean, it shouldn't surprise anyone at this point. The Primark series is a masterclass in sculpting, and Lehman Russ is in my upper half, I think, of Primark sculpts. He is very, very well done, uh, and I do love this model. And things like the the wolf's head, this red wolf's head on the shoulder pad, that is a sculpted on detail. It is a sculpted on detail that is really, really fine, and you need to know what you're doing to get the most out of painting it. And I love those sorts of details because it rewards a great painter. So I normally would end the episode here. I don't want to do that because I want to balance out the Space Wolves range a little bit by trying to bring back some positivity after just dumping all over it for the last 25 minutes or so. So let's go over to Games Workshop. I know this is going to be crazy, but... There is a gold mine of parts in Games Workshop, whether it's bits or even in some cases, full miniatures, which can be utilized in some capacity for the Horus Heresy. Space Wolf, Wolfguard Terminators are one of those things. Apart from the Crux Terminatus iconography on these guys and the Storm Bolters, these miniatures could actually be used as 30k miniatures. Indomitus Terminators are a thing. And there is nothing stopping a person from taking parts of them or trinkets from them uh, and putting them on 30k Terminators. Why can't you use this wolf's cloak on a 30k Cataphracti Terminator? Nothing stopping you. You could carve off details, cut away the belt trim, whatever it might be. There are bit sellers, whoever, on eBay, go for it. Uh, the head, the heads on these models is bare heads. They look better than the Viragia bare heads. So why not take pieces of them? You could cut the the little wolf's uh, fetish. No, it's not a necklace here. I guess it's just a fetish string off that assault cannon, and you could glue it onto a Reaper auto cannon, for example. Right? There are things that can be done here. Giant rune axes, wolf's tails. Grab the bits of these miniatures and use them to accessorize what would otherwise be bland, uh, regular cataphracti and Tartarus Terminators in 30k, or even just make these into your Indominus Terminators in 30k. You could put the torso, the upper torso of these miniatures, right, just the center torso, onto Tartarus or cataphracti legs, give it cataphracti or Tartarus arms, and apart from having a very slightly different back of the torso, I think it would blend perfectly. So there are options of what you can do here. We also see that with the Grey Slayers, the bits potential in this box is incredible. Uh, it could be the Power Fist, it could be the uh, Totem, it could be some of the backpacks, some of the bolt pistols or bolt guns, or plasma gun, whatever it might be. Bits are everywhere here. The torsos, especially on the uh, Sergeant character at the front here, why couldn't you put all of his parts on a 30k miniature almost exactly as they are? Just change the legs, maybe. That would be it. And you'd be like, wow, what a fantastic looking 30k sergeant. Where'd you get the bits for that? I got them out of the Grey Hunters from 40k. Right? And these models aren't going to be around forever. So get on eBay or whatever, find a bit seller, take some of these bits and put them into your armies. Why not? Um, that beaky helmet with the little runes carved into it, uh, you could use it. And of course, the bare heads. It's hard to get good bare heads these days, especially with things like all the top knots and ponytails and the beards. Uh, the bare heads that they bought out at Forge World, which I will talk about uh, at some point, they don't have all those details. Many of them are just shaven heads or have very short, cropped, neat hairlines. Uh, then you go into characters. Arjack Rockfist, still one of the most gorgeous sculpts they've done to date. And you could turn Arjak into an awesome Gygor, or uh, sorry, a uh, Haval Redblade. 
Give him that heavy bolter on his right arm in place of the storm shield. With the left arm, uh, obviously you would change out the shoulder pads, but turn the uh, hammerhead into an axe head. Holy crap, you've got uh, Haval Redblade and he isn't a hideous monstrosity. Why can't you do that? You could. And okay, the armor is not exactly um, 30k period, authentic, Tartarus, da da da. Who cares? It's Artificer Armor or whatever for a Terminator Praetor character who's unique and meant to stand out in your army. Just, it would look great. I'm telling you right now. Uh, and then Jarl Stormcore, exact same thing. Just plonk it in your 30k army and say he's a Tartarus Librarian. Yeah, okay, he doesn't have Tartarus shoulder pads. It's really the only main giveaway on the armor. So what? They're covered by the cloak for the most part anyway. Just... Shave away this Crux Terminatus thingy on the shoulder, and you're laughing. There you go, Wolf Priest, done. There, you see, this is the funny thing, is 30k has far more usable, viable parts in the 40k Space Wolf range than it does in the 30k range. It's just one of those great ironies. Fenrisian Wolves, straight out of the box, can use them in your army. They suck rules-wise, but hobby-wise, they give you a fantastic opportunity, and they make good objective markers for Space Wolves. You know, you can paint the fur in such a way that they have different numbers in the fur. One dark streak down the center of the model, objective one. Two dark streaks, objective two, right? There are things you can do. Uh, then we've got their dreadnought. Their box dreadnoughts, they're gorgeous. And there is nothing that makes them look particularly 40K. So get some las cannon arms, stick them on this. Perfect 30k box dreadnought. Why not? It's it's up to you what you do with it. Any leftover parts from this as well could be utilized elsewhere. You could take something like that, uh, the power axe and hand, and put it onto a contemptor dreadnought. Right? So take parts from this miniature and use them elsewhere. The the shield and the axe on a contemptor dreadnought replacing its power fist, I think would look pretty good. It would be unique and it would feel different. Of course, there are other parts on this miniature. You could go for just this chassis here, um, the more basic chassis, where, I say basic, where it has, again, thinner and finer trim somehow than the Varagia Terminators do. But this is a box dreadnought ready to go in 30K. What tells you that this is a 40K miniature? Nothing really. Uh, again, I would pref I prefer to go DACA dreadnoughts on my box dreadnoughts, um, but you could do that. Like straight out of the gate and any leftover parts you could use elsewhere. You could take some of these weapons like this frost weapon and just say, that's a Gravis Plasma Cannon. I don't think anyone would complain if you're clear and upfront about what is what and you don't use that same sculpt elsewhere as a different item. Uh, but don't use this Murder Fang or whatever his name is, one with the, um, the bear head. I, I hate the bear head sticking out trope. I think it looks awful on Dreadnoughts. Um, personal taste, of course. Uh, opinions may vary. But yeah, lots of useful parts in here and bits of fur and such and fetishes and trophies. They can be put onto the other Dreadnoughts. This one kit could supply three or four Dreadnoughts that you have with parts to make them feel more Space Wolf. Uh, when it comes to Wolf Wards, Wolf Ward Crom, what armor is he in? Oh, it's Mark VI. So what do you have to do to make this into a 30k model? Pretty much nothing. You could maybe change the shoulder pads if you're like a 100% purist and you want to give him Mark VI shoulder pads or something, but what he's got works. So straight out of the box, here's the plastic Praetor just waiting to be used that is being probably discontinued. Ulrich the Slayer. Hey, look, this is a 30k chaplain waiting to happen. It could even be a Praetor because... Well, if you said that's a Count as Thunderhammer or something, and the guy clearly has that leadership aura with that pose, I wouldn't argue with you. Uh, that armor, that's not Mark Eight. That's Mark Five power armor. Thank you. You know, this is the way I would I would do it, and because there's not a lot to say that it's Mark uh, Seven or Eight power armor. Really, yeah, it's got rounded kneecaps, but they look very Mark Five, and he's got that massive belt buckle, which is used in a lot of Mark Five sculpts. Hey, works for me. Uh, and then, of course, the Iron Priest. That's a Tech Marine. And okay, he's in Mark Seven power armor. You're using this one model in your army. 
only the most diehard of gatekeeping 30k purists who hate plastic and only use original forge world resins that they bought back in 2011 are going to complain about it you tell me that this guy is a tech marine master of the forge in your army i'm going to nod and go fuck yeah that is and i think most people would so there are ways of redeeming the space wolves range in 30k uh, it's just unfortunate in that many of the space wolves 30k models are awful and they have to be rescued by 40k plastics but know that they're out there and there are some great looking models that will that will literally just slot straight in. You don't have to think about it any deeper than that. And that is a redeeming factor. Uh, anyway, that's it for me. I am Mac with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode.